What's up guys, Shane here from Fugadec 3D Printing and today I'm going to give you an update on my MMU Saga. Welcome back guys. So here I have my Prusa i3 Mark III S and on top of it is mounted the MMU 2 S. If you're not familiar, this is the Mark III, that was very, it's like the most popular printer pretty much ever produced uh, by Prusa, and this is again their Mark III version. Mark III S says it has a new upgraded uh, extruder on it, and there's some changes that they did with it there. And this is the MMU 2 S, which is again the upgraded version of the MMU 2. From the 2 to the S, there was really no change, but it changed the name, so, so be it. Now, what the MMU 2 does is it's a multi material unit, MMU, that's what it stands for. And it has here out the back, five PTFE tubings that comes off of it that can link to five different filaments. Right now I have five colors of PLA from KD Essentials and I thought I would give them a fair shake at, they sent me a bunch of filament, so I thought I would give them a shot at working in the MMU. They said their filament is super accurate, they have really, really nice windings on their spools, and they claim a whole lot. I think they're actually from Germany. Um, but anyways, they sent me a bunch of different colors. So I figured, well, this is how I'll test it out. But anyways, you can put solubles, you can do, you can mix materials in here. Again, five different materials you can load in this machine. It brings one out and then it has you extrude it. So that's the basics of what this unit does. Anyways, so I did a video where I got it installed and I always had problems with it. And then I gave kind of like my first impressions of like just trying to get this thing configured. And it was giving me quite a lot of problems. And I kind of like tabled it because I needed to print. I needed to work on other projects. There's so much else I need to do to keep my YouTube channel moving. I don't have a lot of time just to like drill into this and just like just put as much time into it as I really needed to. I just couldn't. So that came to a change over this past week. So I've spent about four days working on this. One day was really the, like the only real work I had to do was about one day's worth or one evening's worth in order to get this working. So what I ended up doing is uh, Chris's Basement is a very, very informative channel and he does some great videos. He has one on how he was able to like fine tune basically or what things that you need to check out on your MMU to make sure that it's functioning properly. So I watched Chris's video and I worked on this and I went through step by step exactly what he said to do. And you know what? I got this working. I made a few changes to the slicer settings just for this material. I did use his guide on basically how to get the best tip of filament. Uh, I'm actually doing, I think I'm doing two cooling moves with this filament and my actual uh, purge amounts are a little bit different as well but that's gonna be different for every filament just because not every PLA is exactly the same. And it could even vary by color. And I've got this pretty much sorted for this filament in general. And I'm at a happy place. It's not very stringy. It's not very blobby. It's working out. I did swap out this PTFE tubing from the Prusa orange one as this one is a cheap one and it has a lot more um, space in it. The one from Prusa is great but it is super duper tight tolerance and that is just not working out well for this unit. It needs a sl it needs slop, it really does. There's, there's no reason to have this be super tight. It's just a reverse Bowden tube basically. It's, it's all it's doing. Everything that has to work is inside the extruder. You don't need anything else. So this needs to be honestly sloppy, which is great. I'd actually bought even sloppier PTFE tubing just in case I think this is four millimeter and this is uh, 3.5, I think it is, or this is three and four. Maybe that's what it is, three and four. Four I was gonna use here on the back and I was gonna use this three millimeter here. But again, after watching Chris's video and going through that, I don't need this anymore. So it's just gonna sit in the bin if I ever need it for a future project. Camera is slightly crooked. That's a little annoying. Oh well. So basically once I got this filament tuned, I started printing. And I have to say, I only got a couple prints done but I am super duper happy with the results. I had to intervene once in all of these prints and that was because I think it, for some reason, it just had a bad cooling move and the filament tip came out a little bit too big and expanded as it cooled down and it got stuck here, even in this larger Bowden tube. That would have happened a lot more times if I was using that tire tolerance one, but using this, it worked out much better. Oh, I am using some remix parts as well. I guess I forgot to mention that. Um, so I will link the remix parts down below of what I'm using. 
uh, these do add a little bit, again, they add tolerance, they add a little bit more space so that you're not trying to thread the needle every time. They got a little bit of wiggle room, which is what this unit needs. It needs a little bit of wiggle room so that they can work out well. So I intervened once and they all came out fantastic, so I want to show you them right now. So this is my first print. This is actually a print that I designed, and these clips right here actually clip into the metal shelving that I'm using, the wire rack, which is very common with a lot of people use. And I just modeled it, and basically these are basically it's six bodies. So it's each of these numbers is a body, and then the main body here. These actually fit PTFE tubes uh, or PTFE push fittings, so they screw into each side. This side is nothing, but you can see here, there's a little bit of color distortion, and that's just because going from black to white is the hardest transition you can do, and I was not perfect with it. It's okay. This is a purely functional part. It's, it works. I already have one working, but it broke. So I'm putting out a couple more of these just to have in case something else was to happen, but I was happy. No interventions. It worked. The last one was just two colors. So here we're going to go up to three colors then. All right, we're, we're going to try, we're going to go for broke here. This is one that I had to actually intervene on. You can't tell where, it was about halfway through and the blue had gotten, uh, again, caught up in the PTV tubing. So once I restarted that, it worked out great. And I mean, this looks fantastic, it really does. Everything adhered well, there's no blips, blobs, or anything. This, this is 0.15 millimeter layer height. And again, I'm using the orange, blue, and black from Katie Essentials, all the same filament manufacturer all of their PLA, it looks great. All right, now here's the Moai. I tried printing him before, he didn't work out, dual color Moai, perfect print right off the bat. I just picked blue and black, and yeah, it looks great. Nice and shiny, everything's filled in really nice. I'm super impressed with how well this came out. I'm very, I, I just, I'm very, very pleased now. And then on the Thingiverse, I found this. It's a MMU2, uh, basically remix of the front plate and it has the colors kind of filled in because right now it's not filled in at all and then off another design I got the uh, knob so I'll have the knob it has a little bit of the orange and actually the orange is so thin from KD uh, Essentials it looked gold I'm okay with that I think it looks good I'm not really pleased with their gold when it's in thin layers or their with their orange in thin layers because it does look golden but I'm okay with it, so this was go ahead and using one, two, three, four colors. So I chalked it up to that, and again, this print right here was separate. I should have printed together, but I didn't. But either way, very happy with it. And the texture on here is from the powder-coated PEI sheet. So I've had five, bas basically five back-to-back -back successful prints. I had to intervene once, and I'm gonna count that as an absolute win. The KD Essentials filament, the KD Essentials filament is working flawlessly it really is it's super consistent i'm very very happy with how they it's come out again the consistency of it i'm working on my purge blocks some of them are a little bit bigger a little bit heavier uh, this one right here is the heaviest and this is from just this itty bitty little moai uh, just because it is so many color changes on every single layer that ends up taking up quite a lot uh, and then the actual gecko one is also fairly dense because again, layer changes every single time. It's doing two and then three color changes every time. So the more color changes you have, the more material you're going to waste. You can waste less by tuning those purge blocks, but just keep in mind, you're gonna waste material doing this. Now you could print two different objects at once and do wipe to infill. That is an option in Prusa Slicer that you can do and that saves you a ton of filament because you don't see the inside. As long as you have two or three perimeters and you're not using like a semi-translucent filament, like if you're using opaque filament, it doesn't matter. One perimeter will hide it. But if you're using translucent filament, you kind of can't do that, but opaque filament, you'll be fine with. Now, all of this is running. Again, I have it just kind of here on the table. It's all running out of my rep box, my original rep box. They have rep box two now, which kind of upset that I bought it and I should have just waited another like three months and the rep box two came out. But it's here nor there. It's all running out of my rep box. It's working out great. I do need to figure out some type of buffer for, you can see it right here. I need to figure out some kind of buffer because my filament comes down. And as of right now, these tubes kind of bend and go in to my push fitting adapter, which basically mounts like a scorpion right here. Mounts to the top. And there's, there's not much space. And I have had before where some of the filaments had gotten intertangled. So I need to figure out some way to buffer here. 
I haven't figured that out yet. So I either want to need to figure out some type of 90 degree buffer for this or something that I can maybe zip tie or mount to the top of the wire rack and go from there. It has to have all five in it though. I might be able to use the, the original buffer that they have for it. I just haven't really played with it much. I might be able to do that, I don't really know, but I'm gonna look into that and see what's gonna work out. Maybe I'll do another, I'll do a shorter video just of kind of like, hey, this is how I figured out what I'm gonna do. Um, but I thought people would, would benefit from this update and what it took me to get it. I'm not a, a 3D printing professional. This is not what I do for a living. It's what I do for fun. I do it in my evenings. It's what, 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night right now and I'm working here in my little studio. I just do this for fun and I don't always have time to dig into these. The MMU requires work. I have yet to see someone get it working just like that. I really do, have not seen anybody. It takes a little bit of tuning and it takes know-how and you have to put the time in to be able to figure out the different settings you need for different filaments. It's very time consuming. But once you have that kind of nailed in, save your settings, make some notes so that when you go back to that filament, you're gonna know what to work with. But either way, again, I thought everyone would benefit to know that if you're having problems, no, you're not the only one. If you're having problems, yes, you can get through it. Use the links down below, check out some of the videos and, and uh, other resources I'm posting down below and check those out, read through them, watch the videos, watch what other people are doing and they will really help you out. I'm not gonna recreate those videos because they've done such a great job. I need to give them credit because they helped me and I really want you to go and watch their tutorials and what they have done to get this working. I have a really hard time calling this a fantastic unit but it's getting close, it really is. It's not like using a, a palette where it kinda just, those apparently just work. I don't know, but palette, you should send me one so I can try it out and compare it to something like this because if your solution's easier, I would love to know that and be able to push that kind of product. But for right now, this is the cheapest way you can go multi-material at $300 if you already have a Mark III. With the palette, that can be done on any other machine. So, palette, mosaic manufacturing, contact me. I really wanna do something with you guys. Even if it's let me borrow one, how about that? Let me borrow one and I'll check it out. So I hope you guys found this video useful. I hope it helps you get your MMU unit working and producing good quality prints because that's definitely what these are. These are very good quality prints. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Either way, love to hear what you guys think in the comments below. If you guys wanna stay tuned what's going on, make sure you hit that big old subscribe button and then hit the bell icon that way you get a notification when I upload new content. Other ways you can help out is become a patron. It takes a dollar more, and my patrons really help me make content. They help me buy things for the channel. They help fuel the channel, and they are the lifeline of this channel. So I really thank them for their support. And again, it takes a dollar to become one of them. So please head down there and check that out. Other ways you can help out, there's some one-time donation links. Throw me a coffee, throw a tip on Streamlabs, hit the join button down below on the channel, or you can use any of the affiliate links and discount codes down below. We've got lots of different discount codes down there as well. So check all those out because everything you do helps the channel. Even if you're one just watching this video, I appreciate you too. Thanks for watching guys and happy printing.